I'm Al Kaley Ichak, adjunct colleague of Botany and also a lecturer. The Polynesians who immigrated to Hawaii brought with them about a half dozen trees. One of the most important trees which they brought with them is Kukui or Aluritis Molucana, also known as the candlenut tree, which belongs to the family Euphorbiaceae. One of its relatives is the tongue oil tree, which is used to make waterproof umbrellas, which would be sorely needed here in Lion Arboretum, since it always seems to be raining. The important thing about Kukui is that it is one of the introduced plants, which has been what we commonly refer to as being naturalized. It's a plant which has made itself at home, gone wild, reproduced itself, and forms groves in the forests. If you look up in the valleys of the many mountains, you will also find that there are light green areas, and these represent kukui. Now, kukui is important because the stem provided a brown dye. The sap was used for what is known as bird lime, along with ulu, or breadfruit, and also Paisone grandis, Papala kepau. The sap was put at the end of sticks, and a, a bird hunter would go up in the forest, hidden among the leaves with a rain cape made out of key leaves, and lift this stick up in the branches of the tree, and then the bird would alight on the sticky sap, and voila. You have found a bird from which you could make, get the feathers for the capes, and you could, if you stripped him completely of his feathers, eat him. The fruit was extremely useful because the fruit, if it was cooked and chopped up and mixed with salt and sometimes limu or seaweed, what is known as inamona or a, a relish, don't ever eat the nut raw because if you do, it is a drastic purgative. In other words, you will be in a sitting position for several hours. So I do not re recommend that you eat it raw. The medicine, the juice that remain in the husk of the kernel could be used as a throat gargle. The fruits were also strung in delays, and you could also make a lay out of the flowers and leaves. From the root, was obtained a dye, a black dye, which could also be used to color kappa or bark cloth. There was also a dye from the burnt shells, which was mixed with the oil of the nut, gave you a black dye, and the immature fruits provided a beige dye. The fruits could also be used as lays. But probably most important was the fact that the oil that was extracted from the nut was used for light. If you had a string of the husk fruits with a hole drilled through and used a coconut midrib as the threader or the holder of these various nuts and lit it, it would be a candle. On the other hand, if you smashed the nuts and extracted the oil and put it in a stone which had a depression and you put in a piece of kappa and light it, that would give you a stone lamp. And so it was extremely useful from that particular viewpoint. The legislature, in its great wisdom, named this the state tree. And so this is a tree which is associated with Hawaii, even though it was brought here and introduced by the immigrating Polynesians. 
Milo, or Pacific Rosewood, is known as Thespesia popolnia. It belongs to the family Malvaceae. The family Malvaceae is known because there are a number of genera which are here in Hawaii. In the genus Hibiscus, for example, there are five endemic species, that is, species which are known to occur only in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. One indigenous species. In the genus Abutilon, there are 19 endemics. In the genus Cida, or Elima, there's one indigenous species. In the genus Gossypium, there's one endemic. This is the cotton genus. And then there are two genera which are known only to occur in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. Hibiscadelphus, or Huakuahivi, of which there are six species, three of which are extinct. And the genus Kokia, of which there are four species, two of which are extinct, one endangered, and one vulnerable. Milo was important because the wood was used for making food bowls. If you remember, poi is sort of a, a, a fluidy food, and so you need a container which will hold poi. And this was number two in preference for the Hawaiians because it provided a rich brown color and takes a very fine polish. For some reason or other, was not as popular as co. But those were the these are the most popular woods that were used for food bowls. Co was number one in preference insofar as food bowls were concerned because it had a very attractive grain, was easily worked, and the main thing was it did not impart a flavor to the food. It was not bitter. Today we use koa and everybody thinks it's a wonderful wood, but koa would require what, we, what was referred to as curing, to remove the bitter taste that's in the wood. In the case of ko, K-O-U, versus koa, K-O-A, ko, which was brought here by the immigrating Polynesians, you didn't have to cure it. The curing process involved putting parts of sweet potato or sweet potato poi or kalopoi in the bowl for a whole week and then you would rinse it out, put poi in there overnight and see whether there was a bad taste or not. And if there wasn't, you would go through the whole process again. Sometimes it would take weeks to remove this bitter taste. And so for that reason, because ko, K-O-U, and milo did not have a bitter taste or impart any flavor to the foods, they were preferred for making food balls. The leaf provided a light tan dye. The flowers were used for lays, and the seeds could be even used for food. How, or Hibiscus tiliaceus, is another member of the family Malvaceae. The stem, in other words, the wood, which is very light, was used for the canoe boom, booms, or the yako, or the, and also for the canoe float of the outrigger canoe, the ama. It was also used in the, as a fire maker, or the aumaki. A block of how wood would serve as the base, and then one would get olomea wood, which was a very hard wood, an endemic, Paratetia sandwichensis, and the person would rub back and forth the Olomea wood against the Hau wood and have a some rubbish, pieces of kapa and what have you, or in shavings of wood. And if you rub back and forth for about 20 seconds or longer, you would get heat, and then the pieces of kapa and wood shavings would catch on fire. And so this is one way in which the Hawaiians in the old days, you made fire. This was their matches, so to speak. As I mentioned earlier, the wood of this tree is very light, and so it was used for fishnet floats, or the mo'u, and also for fishing gear containers. From the stem, you could obtain cordage, which was good fiber and medicine, The kamani, or kamanu, 
or Alexandria laurel, or as it is known to the scientists, Calophyllum, Inophyllum, a name that sort of rhymes, belongs to the family Clusiaceae, used to belong to the family Gutiferi, which is sort of a mouthful, I guess. This is a tree which, from which sometimes the wood was used for food bowls, but it was not done as much because when the wood was, ex when the wood was exposed to the sun, the wood would crack. The flowers provided a perfume. From the fruit, one could obtain oil. Elsewhere in the Pacific, it was used more for this oil purpose, for lights, for medicine, for body oil, and medicine from all parts of the tree. The tree is, has a fruit which sort of re resembles a wrinkled golf ball, and it's commonly thought of as being plant, planted near temples. And so in the old Hawaiian courtyard, it was planted between the Dean and Gartley and Crawford and George Halls, because after all, the University of Hawaii is a temple of learning. And many students, as they're walking from Crawford down to Dean or Gartley Halls, will kick along these so-called golf balls. And it's sort of a game which most people have played throughout the decades.